so general site labor costs then we have a spike with the specialists come in and they, they do some investigations or whatever it is they're going to do and look for, I don't know, historical Roman artifacts or whatever it might be. And then the dumper truck come in and they take the, the, the spoil, the muck away. So there's a big chunk of cost there. So that is one way of building up your cost model and then linking it in time to something that's happening on your schedule. And then, of course, you could start adding uncertainty to the schedule and then these things would then move in time. So if you wanted to look at what's called a probabilistic cash flow uh, rather than this static deterministic cash flow, then you'd run the simulation. And then you go to PCF over here and then this would show you the just like we saw with the P values on the on the distribution graph, like we were talking about the P80 cost, you could look at P80 of when in time are you expecting to incur cost? But you'd have to move the schedule in some way. You'd have to actually add uncertainty in there to do that. So let's do that very, very, very quickly. So if we go to our risk register, project risks, it's empty at the moment. And I'm going to expand my global register. So this is my historical library of different performances and things in terms of breakdown structures, work packages. Maybe I've got historical data on previous um, subcontractors because we use them all the time. They're our kind of strategic supply chain partner, so we just know uh, how they do. But for the purpose of today, I'm just going to use the what I'm called here quick risk, which is just a, a preset. Um, I hit including project. It's just a preset plus or minus 10% on both time and cost. Um, I'm just going to toggle off the cost. I don't want it to be doing anything other than a uh, schedule impact. So once you brought it out of the library from the global risk register part of the database, once it's on the project level risk register, you can manipulate it and call it whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be called the same thing. OK. Now, the probability of that actually says zero, and that's not right. I don't want that. So if you ever see an issue like that, just change from standard. And you can put it back to 100% then. Put it back to an estimating uncertainty. As you need to. So estimating uncertainty should always show as 100%. So but the risk mapping, once you've got your quick risk, you can then add it. 10% plus or minus duration uncertainty to each of these activities. So if we now ran the simulation, we would actually see the Gantt chart moving around in time. So you can't see it a huge amount. Let's zoom that in 150%. So I'm just looking at these and they're only 10 days a piece. So you could, they're ever so slightly gently moving around a little bit. So we might actually want to consider just pumping up the volumes. Let's make these 100 days each, something like that. Now, what you can also do um, as a little top tip, if, if you highlight that first one and then hold down shift, select the bottom task and then control D, that's fill down. So whatever was in that top one that you had selected originally, it, will, it just copies it. So it just did it in a single click. So it's a useful thing to know about. And that's also useful to know about if um, you ever have a drop down menu, um, like if you're selecting a calendar and there's different calendar types, like a weekend working calendar, uh, like a uh, like a, a different shift pattern or something. You want to do a what if scenario. That's a very quick way of um, toggling and changing rather than doing it click and then do one and then click and do the next one. You can do it all in one go then. Okay, useful tip. So now plus or minus 10% means that we should see durations increase not by a single day, but by potentially up to 10 days or downward by 10 days. So 90 to 110 days each. So let's just now rerun that simulation. It should be a bit more obvious that things are moving now. I can see that much more clearly over here. Okay, so we hit complete. Actually, no, we don't want to do that. We want to do step through but we actually wanted to go back to the cost model because now that things are moving around in time, this cash flow that we just created down here, if I do step through, not only are the numbers up here moving around apart from the dump trucks because we just had a static 3,000 and just one of them each time, but everything else is moving around in time now. So if I now hit complete, we 
it will always be brought to the distribution graph as the default after running a simulation of Monte Carlo. If you come over to PCF, probabilistic cash flow, now we can see where in time we're going to spend the money. Now, at the moment, I've got it toggled. So you can see I've got lots of different focus values, but I'm only really interested in, say, the P75. So I'm comparing the gray bar versus the kind of uh, orange amber colored bar here. So this is showing me that if I want 75% uh, confidence in my plan and what I am communicating to other people, then I could be reasonably assured that we're going to overspend uh, this particular period here. In fact, it looks like a, a gentle overspend in virtually every single period. Obviously, if you started adding in opportunities to the risk register of potential cost saving or duration saving, then this would potentially flip that around and lower those bars beneath where the gray uh, is at the moment. Um, but what you can also see is if we look over here, there's a period where, where there, there is no gray bar. So there are some um, instances in the simulation where there is delay beyond and prolongation beyond the point at which uh, we were expecting the project to finish. And so we're incurring a, a, a possible cost in that final week uh, in that point there that we're not planning for, not currently planning for. So that, that's the beginnings of looking at prolongation. So let's now come back to cost. So We'll handle prolongation in a bit more detail in just a moment. OK, so that was an introduction to probabilistic cash flow. Now, in the next video, um, there, we're going to be introducing you to an alternative way of connecting time and cost together. So that would be using uh, formulas and variables, this kind of thing. Um, but if you actually think, no, I'm not going to get into the minutiae detail of that, then you might want to skip ahead and go one more video uh, ahead to video 14, uh, where actually arguably the simplest method, which we call the schedule connection method, um, which automates some of the prolongation calculations and things for you. You might want to skip straight to that one. Uh, but yeah, formulas is coming up next.